this morning. We are live, locked, and loaded for God's Word to be delivered straight into your homes. My name is Brother Audie Villaraza, and uh, it's a pleasure for me to be here in front of you. Thank you for allowing me to visit your personal space wherever you are, whether you're at home, whether you're traveling, or whether you're just uh, you know, logged in your phone somewhere around the world in vacation. Thank you so much. We are in talk six of... Uh, I find that funny when I, whenever I say that we're, we're in talk six because it reminds me of the word toxic. Uh, but, but anyway, so we're in talk six of our series called Exodus, uh, where we're studying you know, the, the journey of uh, the Israelites going towards the promised land. And I prepared some good, good uh, uh, lessons for everybody to learn f- uh, from today. And so, are you ready to hear God's message for you today? I'd like to invite you to say our favorite prayer here at the feast as we all come. Together, We let's do this in your own homes, in your own comfort. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Just raise your hand upward. Signify God's presence in your place. And together, let's say this. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I'm God's beloved, I am God's servant, and I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, that's right, I am blessing the world In Jesus' name, amen. Can you all join me in singing and giving reverence to the Word of God as we all sing? Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I would certainly be uh, stressed out to know that if the music ministry is not with me today, ang una kong iniisip, nasa tono ba ang aking pagkanta ngayong umaga? But thank God that this is not my first battle. <laughs> I've been here before and we've done this so many times and I'm so comfortable being in front of you right now. Anyway, can I pray for you very quickly as we open and break, break uh, bread in this moment? Just bow down your head. You can close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment that we are together. As we are about to open your book, your word, and your message. We pray that there would be a flow of wisdom coming through the screens, that your people would receive it with clarity. I pray for good internet connection. I pray for stability so that whoever will hear this message, Lord, it will speak loud and clear in volumes over the situation in their life today. We pray, Lord, that your sovereignty would shine in this moment. Help us and teach us, Lord, to overcome just like your son Jesus, through the biggest trials of our life. And may we be blessed, be changed, and be inspired by your word. Lord, I pray that as I speak, I decrease so that you can increase. Let my voice be your voice so that everything that would be spoken in the moments to come, you would change it and it would be your voice. Speak, Lord. We are all listening. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Uh, It's so wonderful to be in the presence of so many uh, praising people today. Like I said, we are in talk six. We have been reading the book of Exodus for six Sundays now. And mind you, this is something that spoke to me over the last few few weeks as we have been studying this long story. Alam nyo, when you watch the Ten Commandments, it's a very long movie. But right now, it, it, after six Sundays, we have been reading the passages. We are now in the part of the story where the Israelites have already walked away from Egypt. They're going to the promised land. And uh, they, they recently just uh, went through and walked across the Red Sea. And you would think, you know, in such a short time, six Sundays, we were able to cross that journey. But did you know that it wasn't actually just six weeks for the Israelites back then? How long did it take them to cross the entire wilderness? And how long did it take them to actually uh, endure slavery? Did you know that they were slaves in Egypt for 440 years? Imagine that. And yet we're covering it in just six weeks. You know, six weeks. You know what that tells me? Sometimes in life, 
you look at a certain detail about a person and then you make a judgment based off of that one thing that the person did thinking that you can you can already give a label or, or a, 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 a description to what's happening to the pers- person but actually you realize that you cannot judge a person based off of one detail in fact you can't really judge people because it's the lord who judges people i have a classmate when i was in uh, elementary i think it was yeah in elementary and uh, we gave him such a hard time because uh you know, whenever he would go to school, he would often smell. Mabaho yung damit niya. And I'm not talking about, you know, at the end of the day when you know that. When at the end of the day, you ride the school bus. Aluhalo yung mga bata dyan, di ba? There's so many kids there. Amoy, ano? Parang amoy uh, na, na, ano yun? Yung na, na bulok na itlog. Yun ang amoy ng school bus dati. I, I don't know if that's how the school buses smell now because most of the kids are in private cars. But back in the day, whenever you would end school, you would ride in that school bus. Naalala niyo yun. <laughs> amoy itlog yung mga bata. Ang banto. But this guy, he would show up in the in the in the morning and for some reason he would often smell bad his clothes so much so that we everybody gave him a nickname everybody called him boy bantot kasi bantot siya talaga pero alam niyo nalaman namin one day that the reason why he smelled bad in the morning was that his family was actually going through financial difficulty and you know how people would wash their clothes three times yung iba sa inyo pag magbanlaw tatlong beses apat na beses ito isang beses lang sila naglalaba. Bakit? Nagtitipid yung kanyang magulang. They did not have enough money. You know, I truly believe this, that when you have context, it will give you compassion. Because compassion comes from context, from knowing the background of every person. So before you even give an opinion about someone who you do not even know what they're going through, think again. Know their story first. Know the background before you actually give an opinion. That, that's a word for somebody today. That's what's happening in the story. Ang haba-haba ng nababasa natin in the book of Exodus. And we're seeing just little details of what was happening. But did you actually know every detail, every suffering, every pain that the Israelites were going through? So before you jump to conclusions, know their story first. And another reflection that I had here is that you know how in life sometimes you feel like life is so long? Parang ang haba ng buhay, ang haba ng taon na to, ang daming mong pinagdaanan, parang ang bibigat ng mga problema mo. And then you wake up, boom. You're already 44 years old. You already have grandkids. You're already senior. Or you're already in your exit season. And you realize that life has passed you by. And the only thing that you would probably remember are only the significant parts, you know, the little details, the highlight reel that you read in the Bible right now in the big book of Exodus, the things that are so meaty that the author would, would put in because it was so significant. And it truly teaches us to really appreciate the journey, to appreciate the every moment that happens in your life. In other words, to make the moments matter. And, you know, the journey is so long sometimes. In fact, you're reading the book of Exodus they just recently crossed, last week, Didoy preached about it. They crossed the Red Sea, right? But if this were a Hollywood movie, this would be a perfect time to roll the credits. Happy ending, you know, good ending. But actually, it's not the ending. How do I know that? Because we're still just in chapter 15. The book of Exodus ends in chapter 40. So we still have a long way to go. In fact, if you read the next books that happen, uh, Leviticus, uh, numbers, Deuteronomy, did you know that the journey in the wilderness is just about to begin for the Israelites? So what does this teach us? This actually teaches us that the end of a journey is really the beginning of another journey. So don't worry, don't be afraid, don't be depressed. If the journey that you are in feels like you're losing some battles, it doesn't mean that the, it's the end of a journey. If you've lost some things in your life right now, I guarantee you, it's because it's the beginning of another beautiful journey in your life. Our big message for today, God is in the journey. Whatever journey you are going through, whether it's rainy season, whether it's a sunny season, I want you to know that God is in the journey. Praise God. Anyway, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to I'm going to teach you four messages and hopefully we're going to learn from this. It's a good time to take notes because you're in your com- place of comfort. Uh, take screenshots and then share it later so that people can be blessed by it. Anyway, four messages as to the story that we're going to be reading. I'm going to read to you first the scripture um, and then I'll give you the message number one. 
We are in uh, Exodus chapter 15. If you've got a physical Bible, I want you to join me and break open the Bible. Exodus chapter 15, verse 22. And the story goes, again, this is after they've crossed the Red Sea. And then it says, Then, then Moses led the people of Israel away from the Red Sea, and they moved out into the desert of Shur. This is actually the, uh, the NLT version that I'm reading. But there is another version that I like. It comes from the English Standard Revision. Let's show that. The other prescription, it says there that then Moses made Israel set out from the Red Sea and they went into the wilderness of Shur. Notice that change in the word. Desert from wilderness. The other word for desert is also wilderness. You know, it's, a, it's very synonymous. It's a little interesting when you... When you read, especially, I try to imagine this as a first-time reader back in the day of when they published this book and people were reading it for the first time, how it, it must have been a shock to the reader to know that, you know, the Israelites, they endured slavery for 440 years. They, they went through some unimaginable pain and suffering that none of us can ever probably even experience in our whole lifetime. And now they're free. They just walked away from Egypt. They just walked away from, from, from Pharaoh and, and the Egyptian abusers. Only to wind up in the wilderness? I mean, is it life like that sometimes? Like you, you, you feel like you've been going through two years of a big struggle in the pandemic. You lost your job. You lost a loved one. You lost a relationship. You lost some opportunities. You lost some time. You lost a little bit of your, your health. And now that you're finally back on your feet and you feel like you're able to take your steps again, all of a sudden, biglang may problema ulit. If there's anything that we can learn from this point, it's this. Exiting your Egypt or that place of hardship doesn't automatically mean that you're already out uh, inside your promised land. It doesn't automatically mean that you're already you know, in that land of promise, that abundance already. Some of us want the shortcut. Sometimes we want the quick fix. Gusto natin shortcut para tayo mabilis ang growth, mabilis ang abundance. Gusto ko may miracle kaagad. I remember one time, um, my son Ethan, we were traveling along Edsa. And then uh, he noticed that there was a, a beautiful motorcycle beside us. I think it was a big bike. And then, you know what he tells um, us, uh, his dad and mom, he says, Mom, Dad, can you buy me a motorcycle? You know, just like that. As if mayaman kami. Parang ganun, ganun lang. Can you buy me a motorcycle? And you know what I told him? I said, Ethan, okay, you know, maybe when you're older, if you work hard enough uh, and if you learn to be responsible, if you're, if you're safe in riding a motorcycle, then maybe, maybe you can buy one for yourself. And then there was silence. He did not say anything. But after 10 seconds, you know what he said? He said, Dad, am I older now? <laughs> Minsan gusto kasi natin magmadali. Gusto natin agad-agad. Right here, right now. I want to make it happen, Lord. But you know, I've realized after living in this world for 40, 44 years, I almost forgot my age. After living in this world for 44 years, you know what I found out? I found out the hard way that if the Lord will give you the blessing right away and you're not ready for that blessing, you know what's going to happen? You will end up breaking that blessing. Instead of being a breakthrough, it will break you. Malulunod ka sa dami ng blessing mo dahil hindi ka ready or you're immature. So I praise God that God knows the exact timing of when to send the blessing when we are ready. And praise God for allowing us to go through the wilderness. Why? Here's the first message. Before you get to the promised land, you need to go through the wilderness because it's in the wilderness where God will change you. It's in the wilderness where God will refine you. Maturity happens in the wilderness. Am I correct? Say amen if you believe that. Because if, for instance, you know, you have that relationship, but you're not ready for that relationship, what's going to happen? You're eventually going to break up. If you have that business, but you're not ready to handle that business, and God gives you that blessing of that business, what will happen is that you will eventually break that business. Sayang! So praise God for the times that He allows us to go through the desert because it's in the desert where He matures us. He refines our character. He refines our personality. He nuhulma tayo ng Panginoon. 
whenever we are in the wilderness and lalim no, di ba? Praise God. If you're in the desert right now, praise the Lord for that because that's in the moment where he's actually trying to remove some of the things that he doesn't want you to take into the promised land. Because if that happens, what will happen in the promised land is that you will you will not be happy where God will take you. Anyway, so that's the first lesson. If you are in the wilderness right now, here's what you need to do. Okay, and this is message number two. You worship in the wilderness. They traveled in the desert for three days without finding any water. Okay, I made sure that I underlined those words, three days, because this is a hyperlink. Remember that the author, the same author of Genesis, the same author of Deuteronomy, of Exodus, of Leviticus, he likes hyperlinks. He likes pointing to different events that happen. And that 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 word, those words, three days, is actually a hyperlink of what? Ten chapters earlier of when Moses and Aaron were talking to the Pharaoh. And they were telling the Pharaoh, can you please let the people go? Why? So that we can all take a three-day journey into the wilderness. For what purpose? So we can offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. Question. Did they actually do it now that they're in the wilderness? Did they actually offer sacrifices? You're going to find out in a moment what they actually did. But I want you to know this, okay? Sometimes we negotiate with the Lord. We offer promises. Have you ever negotiated to the Lord even once in your life? Yung tipong, Lord, if you give me this promotion, Lord, if you give me this boyfriend, if you give me this girlfriend, if you give me this, this, this blessing, Lord, I promise you, I will never ever commit sin again. I will never ever lie again. I will never do this. Nagganya ka na ba kay Lord? Ako naalala ko dati nung alam ko pag may finals exam sa college, Lord, if you let me pass this exam, promise mag-aaral na po ako. Yung pala, hindi ka nag-aaral kasi. <laughs> Minsan we make negotiations to the Lord that are so uh, promising, that are so lofty that sometimes what happens is that we end up breaking that promise. So I can imagine the Lord listening to that to that negotiation. Lord, if you only give me this, magbabagong buhay na ako. Narinig ko si Lord minsan, right. <laughs> because God knows. God knows how we are creatures who are imperfect. We end up breaking our promises and that's exactly what happened to the Israelites. Moses and Aaron said to the Pharaoh, we want to go to the wilderness. Let us go so we can offer sacrifices to the Lord. You know what they did instead of offering sacrifices? They started complaining. You'll see that in a moment. They started complaining to, to, to the Lord. They started complaining to Moses directly. And you know, in their complaint, you know what happened? They started grumbling in the wilderness right now or whenever you find yourself in that hard place. You have a choice actually. You can either grumble or you can be grateful. Ano pipiliin mo doon? Will you thank the Lord that you are in this mess? Or will you complain to the Lord, Lord, ano ba naman? Buisit na buhay ito. Ang dami kong problema. You know, one thing that I've realized is that the enemy cannot stop God from being good. Because God will always be good all the time. God is good. God is good all the time. You cannot change that fact. God will always be good. So if the enemy cannot stop God from being good, you know what he's going to do? He's going to stop you from being grateful. Because when you stop being grateful, what happens is that you become miserable. You remove yourself from the presence of the Lord and everything in your life, you're just looking at the toxic stuff, the negativity. Hindi mo naalala si Lord when you're ungrateful. That's why the enemy loves it when you're not grateful. Because gratitude unlocks all the good stuff from heaven. Joy, peace, love, hope. All the good ingredients from heaven. You know what the enemy wants you to, to, to do? He wants you to start complaining, to start feeling miserable. In other words, he wants you to be bitter about life. And that is exactly what's going to happen next. You're going to see this. When they came to the oasis of Mara, the water was too bitter to drink. So they, play, they call the place Mara, which means bitter. And then the people complained and turned to Moses. And then they said, what are we going to drink? So you see what I mean? Now it's turning bitter to them. Here's message number three. Write this down. In the wilderness, God wants to change you. God will use the wilderness to actually change you. So nakita nyo, di ba? What happens is they start complaining 
to Moses and to Aaron, why did you bring us to this place so that we can, you know, suffer even more? I mean, it's a little ironic to begin with. They suffered so greatly in Egypt. Now they're free. And then all of a sudden, you know, what a way to kick somebody when they're already down. May sugat na nga, pilit mong binubuka yung sugat, sugat di ba? They come to a place, they're thirsty. They've been at this for a month now. And now they're thirsty only to find an oasis, a, a body of water, but they cannot even drink the water because it was too bitter. Is it possible that bitterness was actually following them? Is it possible, I wonder, that there are some sins and some evil that's still following you even up till this day? That's why you experience hardship in your life? I mean, look at this. The Israelites already left Egypt not knowing that Egypt was still inside of them. That's why the Lord, what He was trying to do in the wilderness by allowing them to go through the desert. And mind you, they're going to be there for 40 years. A whole generation will pass by and they're going to be in the desert. Why? Because I want you to, re- to, to, to think about this for a moment with me, okay? Once upon a time, the Israelites, they enjoyed freedom. When? Through the time of Joseph, right? Joseph and his family, they, they, there was abundance, there was freedom, there was hope, there was abundance in Egypt. But then, when you go back to the book of, uh, of Exodus, in the first chapter, what does it say? In chapter 1, verse 6, in time, Joseph and all of his brothers died, ending that entire generation. Namatay na. So now we're talking about who? The new generation. The new generation of slaves who never saw freedom in their life. Ito na yung nakalakihan nila. Nabuhay sila, slave yung tatay nila, slave yung lolo nila, slave din sila. So imagine their life, all their life, all they've ever known is slavery. All they've ever known is bondage to the Pharaoh and the leaders. So by God allowing them to go through the wilderness, it was actually an act of teaching them how to be human again. They were dehumanized for so long under the Pharaoh. They did not know how to be human again. And you know what? This is a very relevant topic right now. I believe we can learn something from this. You know, we live in a culture right now where there is so much, what, cancel culture, hate culture. People are very divisive right now. People are judging one another. We have learned how to be lesser human. And I believe that in this wilderness right now that we are in, God is teaching us how to be human again. Nakalimutan natin yung ating humanity. We have forgotten how to treat others with dignity and with respect. And you know, this is the reason why I love congregational worship whenever we come together to worship the Lord. Why? Because you can be with someone, sitting beside someone, standing beside someone, not knowing what their background is, what, what their political alliances are, what their beliefs are, and you can worship with them together. Jesus unites all of us under the banner of, 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 of His love. We suddenly realize that, hey, we can have differences, but we certainly are together on the same boat. No one is exempted from needing the Lord. In other words, we all need a Savior because we're all sinners in need of a Savior. That's why I love worship. I love the fact that God can humanize us again and we start thinking this person, I may not know this person, and they may, may have different surnames, different backgrounds, different set of beliefs, but we're one in the same. We all need to be saved by the grace of the Lord. But it's in the wilderness where God wants to change you, where God is actually changing you, making you lesser of a human, and making you more and more human. That's the, re- the reality. That's the purpose of being in the wilderness. So that you can become more and more human. Message number four. In the wilderness, God walks ahead of you. In Exodus chapter 15, we're going to fast forward a little bit, okay? In Exodus chapter 16, verse 3, they start complaining again to Moses. And they said, if only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt. Because there, you know, we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted. But now, listen to this, you have brought us into this wilderness to starve us all to death. Grabe. Grabe to. Alam nyo, when I was reading this, it certainly affected me in this way. Imagine this, okay? I would certainly understand the Israelites if, you know, they started complaining after a year of being in, in the desert. 
they started complaining if they were seeing their families and their friends and their classmates die from from starvation or even die from malnutrition. But this was just a month after they left Egypt. And now they're starting to complain. <laughs> Kakaalis mo pa lang sa Egypt and now you're starting to complain. Why were they complaining in the first place? What was the reason? Here it is. It says there, there they were remembering Egypt. Huh? There we sat around with pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted. The reason why they were complaining, number one, was because they were hungry. There was a desperate need. Did you know, my friend, that when you have a desperate need in your life, you are capable of the most atrocious complaints and the most atrocious deeds that you, can, that you will not even imagine that you can do? I've known people, good people, great people, holy people, Nagutum lang ng minsan. Ano nangyari? They started walking away from, from their a place of abundance or a place of blessing. They started giving up something that was so priceless. Yan ang nangyari, di ba? Naalala nyo from, with, with the story of Esau and Jacob. Esau was so hungry one day that when he saw that bowl of soup and then Jacob offered him and then offered the trade, he, tra he traded his birthright for that bowl of soup. We're capable of doing that. Judas, he was offered how many? 30 pieces of silver to trade his master, Jesus. And he took it for something that was so, so temporary. I always like to say this. We trade our treasure for temporary pleasure. And that's what happened. Whenever you have a desperate need, what happens is that you're only looking at that one need. Yun lang nakikita mo, yung isang problema yun. Meanwhile, God has blessed you so, so much. But you don't see the blessings. Why? Because you're focused on that one need, that one desperate need. You're only looking at one provision. You've got a good marriage. You've got a good career. You've got a good family who love you. But because God is not blessing you with, the, with a child, Lord, bakit yung iba? Mas mahal mo kesa sa akin. All of a sudden, you start complaining about that one thing that you do not have in your life. This is a story of Adam and Eve. It's a hyperlink, my friends. God blessed them with a whole garden filled with fruits. Let's say a thousand fruit trees. But from one fruit tree, you cannot eat from that one fruit tree. You mean to tell me that you will focus on that one tree and not thank God for the 999 fruit trees that you have and still just choose that forbidden fruit? That's how we are. When we have a, when we have a need that we think is big, we focus on that one need and then we start forgetting how the, uh, the ways that God has blessed us. What are the ways that God has blessed you this week? But because you have this one problem, you're so fixated on that problem, you feel like God has left you all of a sudden. You start complaining. Not too long ago, you were praising God for the ways that He has healed you and the ways that He rescued you and the ways that He has blessed everything in your life. But because now you've got this one problem, you've forgotten all about God. You've forgotten to praise Him. I hope this is speaking to you. Because this is the reason, you know, there's this thing that the psychologists call homing instinct. What is the homing instinct? Homing instinct is a psychological term that they describe for, for instance, no? there are children who are abused. And when they grow up, did you know that children will try, some of them will try to recreate a, a traumatic part of their childhood in order to have a semblance of comfort in the past? Did you know this? This is a staggering fact, okay? Statistically, in the U.S., People who are now out from prison, let's say they spent time in prison for many years. Did you know this? And this is very scary. 76% of them, of the prisons, of the convicts, after five years, they end up back in prison. Why? Because some of them, they, they deliberately or unconsciously commit another crime so that they can go back to prison. And when they ask the prisoners why they do that, it's because they were so afraid of the outside world now. They got so used to life in prison that the outside world scares them even more. So what they'll do is they'll try to go back to prison. They'll go back to that sin, to that crime, to that evil deed so that they can go back to that place of comfort. This is what, ha what happens to us. We're so afraid sometimes of uncertainty, of stepping out of our comfort zone that we want to suffer even in that place of comfort. 
because we're uncertain. We're afraid of uncertainty more than suffering, in other words. That's what's happening to the Egyptians, uh, to the Israelites. They'd rather go back to Egypt. That's what they said. In fact, in the book of Numbers, it says, Numbers 14, the Israelites wanted to go back to Egypt because of that one missing provision. It says, then they plotted among themselves, and then they said, let's choose a new leader, and then go back to Egypt. Not too long ago, my friends, they wanted to be freed from Egypt, and now, they wanted to go back to Egypt. Parang, parang may mali. Diba? Hindi ka pa ba natuto? Doon sa mga lessons? Apparently not. We forget. We get amnesia. Right? How can you encourage people? People who are afraid of the future. How can you encourage somebody who has lost their faith and trust and because they've forgotten? One way. I want you to know that if you're that person, and you're afraid of what the future holds, and you'd rather stick with the place of comfort because you don't want to move. Because you're comfortable in I want to encourage you and guarantee you this: that God walks ahead of you in the wilderness, wherever you're going, my friend. God is already there. God is already there. He's already prepared every provision. He's already prepared every resource. He's already orchestrated every blessing to where you're going. I don't want you to be afraid. You have been going back and returning to the same place that God already rescued you from. Come on. Stop going to the same prisons that God already rescued you from. Stop putting back the chains that God already broke for you. It's a message for somebody to know that God is walking ahead of you. Wherever you're going, God is already there. He's already led everything to that place. So stop, stop, stop. Stop going back to that same place. Stop going to back to that same sin because you feel that it's your comfort. It's a prison. The enemy wants you there. It's time to walk away from your prison. I hope that you're receiving this message. I'm trying to preach it as best that I could. I want to end the talk with this. If there's one person who can understand us, the truth is, you know, you will have your family, you will have your friends, you will have your best friend, but there's only one person who will understand you and who will never walk away from you. Because if there's one person who also experienced being in the wilderness, guess what? It's Jesus. Once upon a time, Jesus was also led into the wilderness. The book of Matthew says that. He was led into the wilderness um, by the Holy Spirit, mind you. And you know what? In the wilderness, he was tempted. And the first temptation was also the same temptation as the Israelites. It was hunger. You know, the, the enemy knows where to tempt us. It's always hunger. We always have a hunger for a need. Whether it's a physical need, an emotional need, a need for attention, a need for love, a need for affirmation, we will always have a need in our heart. And if the enemy can grab you by that temptation to get you to fulfill that need with a worldly material thing, he will win in your life. But the way to overcome it is the way that Jesus overcame the temptation. You know what Jesus said? He said, man does not live by bread alone. Man does not live by bread alone. I want to break your mentality. The hashtag that bread is life. Yes, physical bread is good. But when you say hashtag bread is life, you're, you need to be talking about Jesus. He's the bread who will give us life. And you know how Jesus was able to overcome that? Number one, two reasons, okay? Number one, it was because of the body of Christ. What do I mean when you say the body of Christ? You know, one way that I'm able to overcome all the temptations of life, you know, there are so many temptations that I could have walked away already from the light of Jesus' family, from the feast. Many temptations. Alam niyo ba story ako? When I started serving at the feast, after three months, I said, I want to serve at the feast. And uh, I joined the music ministry. And uh, praise God that I was able to experience ministry for the first time in my life. But you know, that ministry life ended very abruptly. After one month, I stopped attending. I stopped serving. Why? Because I felt like I had no friends. I was not part of the ministry. I would come, be part of the rehearsals. And then the people who were there, you know, they had their own set of friends. I felt like I was an outsider. You know, I was uh, I was just looking in and people were enjoying. And I had one friend and his name was Brother Sunny. And I called him my friend because he would always sit beside me. Um, but he was my only friend. And, you know, one day, Brother Sunny was called by the Lord back to heaven. Yung nag-iisa kong kaibigan, kinuha pa ni Lord. <laughs> so, you know, I stopped attending. 
But you know, after about two months, I got a call from a guy named Paolo Payawal. And Paolo happened to be the nephew of one of our leaders in community. And he says, bro, napansin ko hindi ka na nag attend Pero alam mo, yung, yung tito ko, si Brother Adrian Panganiban, kilala mo ba siya? Sabi ko, yes, he leads worship diba, in Valle Verde at the feast. And he said, you know, si Brother A, he wants to form this group, something like the Kerygma Five. And he wanted to invite you. And so I walk into the lighthouse in Cubao one day. Then I meet all of these brothers. I've never met them before. Uh, it was... a uh, Carlo Lorenzo, John Ben Rodriguez, Mike Vinyas, Francis Yanga. And for the first time, I, you know, I, I, I opened my life to them. Every week, we would have a fellowship at the Lighthouse. Walang mintis yon, Monday nights. After the fellowship, after the music rehearsals, alam yung gagawin namin? 1 a.m., magkakasama pa rin kami. We would be, read the Bible. But you know what happened? For a whole year of doing that, we all opened our lives to one another. And you know, little did I know that I was actually opening people in my life and fast forward to the day that I'm I'm here still in community 12 years later you know different leadership roles nagkaroon ako ng ibang kaibigan nung naging worship leader ako nagkaroon ako ng ibang kaibigan nung nasa music ministry ako nagkaroon ako ng ibang kaibigan nung naging uh, ministry head ako ngayon builder ako iba na rin ang set of, of friends ko second reason why Jesus was able to overcome it very simple it was because he was the bread of life you know, whenever we go to Mass to receive the Holy Eucharist, we receive the body and blood of Jesus. And so He becomes the food for our journey in this world. When was the last time you received Jesus as your food? Last week? Last month? Last year? Or maybe last 10 years ago? I don't know. But I want to I wanna invite you. I want to I welcome you right now. Receive Jesus. He's the food in the journey. He said once upon a time that, you know, you will always thirst and you'll always be hungry for things. But you will never know the kind of satisfaction and nourishment when you receive Jesus because you will never thirst. You will never hunger again when you've got Jesus in your life. I want you to receive that. You are in a journey right now, my friend. There's so many things that you might be questioning. Where are you taking me, Lord? Where are you bringing me to? Kung alam mo na kung sa kadadali ni Lord, alam mo lahat ng detalye. But praise God that He doesn't give us all the details because it takes faith to take that step every single time, every single day. Especially if you don't know where you're going. I want you to start trusting the Lord because He knows where He's taking you in this journey. It's a long journey. But if you take it with the Lord, I promise you, my friend, it will be a wonderful, wonderful journey. I want to invite you now to prayer. Lord, I trust you. I may not know every detail of where you want to take me, but Lord, I, I, I know and I believe that it will be a good journey, a wonderful journey, a journey filled with blessings, a journey filled with love and laughter and life because you are with me. Amen. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like button and tell people and all your friends and family about the inspiration they can receive here. And remember to subscribe and click the bell icon so that you get notified when we're going to upload the next inspiring video.